Hey, hi, hello. It's me again, here to talk about some more comic book goodness. Spider-Man Far From Home is releasing in the U.S. next weekend, and as always, we want to make sure you're all up to speed on the comic book roots of the main characters appearing in the movie, including Mysterio and Spider-Man himself. But today, we're kicking things off by giving you a twofer with the origins of Hydro-Man and Molten Man, as both are going to be making their big screen debut in Spider-Man Far From Home. Let's start with Hydro-Man. Ready, set, go. Hydro-Man was created by Dennis O'Neill and John Romita Jr. He made his debut in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 212 in January of 1981. The same issue gives us his origin, so let's talk about that. The issue starts off with an experimental generator being lowered into the ocean by a cargo ship. Mr. Whitman, the man leading the project, tells Spider-Man who's overseen the operation to make sure everyone is safe because there's volcanic gases escaping from the ocean floor in that area. To which Spider-Man just says, then why don't you just cancel? Whitman replied, we can't Spider-Man, we have a contract to fulfill. But Whitman still doesn't seem too confident that things are going to go as planned, even telling Spider-Man remember Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. And unfortunately, something did go wrong. When he told the crane operator to let her loose, the electric cable coming out of the generator got tangled and snapped. And now the snapped cable was bouncing around the ship's deck like a rogue fire hose with enough juice to fry Brooklyn. Fried like chicken! <laughs> what? I don't, even, I don't even make no say it. At the same time, one of the ship's workers, Morris Bench, was playing poker with another worker while off duty behind a bunch of crates. Spider Man, in a frantic run just trying to get to the cable to contain it, knocked over a bunch of the crates, which fell into Bench, knocking him overboard. He falls in the water right next to the generator, and the energy conversion reaction within the device combines with the gases in the water to form an energy that doesn't even have a name. At the same time, Spider Man is able to contain the electric cable with his web, and while they're raising the generator out of the water, the other worker that was playing poker with Bench comes to tell Spider-Man that Bench fell overboard. So of course, Spider-Man dives into the water to try to save him. Once in the water, Spider-Man spots him, but sees that he's going into the propeller of the ship, and was sure he was going to be a goner. But somehow, Bench came out of the other side unharmed. So Spider-Man grabs him and brings him to safety. We then see Bench in his quarters trying to dry off, but no matter how many towels he uses or how hard he tries, he just can't seem to get dry. Flash forward a bit, we see Bench at a bar where his strange sweating or perspiring is getting worse, to the point where he finally turns into a puddle of water, but he manages to make his way outside and pull himself together again. He even says, I gotta face it, I've become a freak. I don't like it, and what more Bench don't like, he does something about. They're gonna pay for this, all of them. Spider-Man will be the hardest, so I'll get him first. They'll never see me coming. With his newfound waterbender powers, even though this was technically before Avatar, he starts his hunt for Spider-Man, attacking several people in the process, to the point where the media dubbed him Hydro-Man. By the end of the issue, he has a fight with Spider-Man, at which point Spider-Man hit him so hard, he exploded like a water balloon, and then evaporated in a mist as the comic ends. But now that you know how Hydro-Man came to be, let's talk about Molten Man. Molten Man was created by the great Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, making his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 28 in September of 1965. That's right, he's a really old Spider-Man villain, being one of his first. Anyway, as for his origin, it's given to us in the same issue as his first appearance. And much like Hydro-Man, it's pretty straightforward. The man who would become Molten Man is Mark Raxton. He works in New York City as a lab assistant to Dr. Spencer Smythe, who 90s kids will be familiar with from the Spider-Man animated series. Anyway, Raxton and Smythe created an experimental liquid metal alloy. And one day, Raxton's greed got the better of him as he wants to take the batch of liquid metal for himself, saying to Smythe, it's worth a fortune, and I'm not waiting any longer to get my share. Get out of my way. Smythe tries to stop and even tell him, it's still untested. What if something should go wrong? Don't you understand? But Raxton just punches him and the two start fighting. While running out, Raxton trips Smythe and says, when you wake up, you can make more liquid metal alloy because you're never gonna see this batch again. But the weight of the jar throws Raxton off balance, causing him to trip with the jar hitting the wall, shattering and spilling all over him. The metal alloy then absorbs into his skin, turning him bright yellow like a Simpsons character. He continues to say, I feel as though the alloy is sinking right into my bloodstream. I have to leave. I have to get to a doctor or a hospital if there's still time. On his way to the hospital, he says how strange it is that he doesn't feel any pain. Then while crossing the street, a car starts honking at him, so in a fit of rage, he punches the hood of the car, but to his surprise, he crushed the hood with his bare hands and says, the metal alloy, it's giving me some sort of super strength. He continues to say, even though my fingers are still flexible, they have the power of solid metal. I could use them like weapons without feeling any pain, and then proceeds to flip the car. I feel like that's a little bit of an exaggeration, or overreaction rather. He then says, I've become an actual molten man. I could do anything, take anything. I have been given the power beyond my wildest dreams. He continues to say, everybody out of my way. From now on, you'll run when you see me coming. 
no one could stand up to the Molten Man. And thus Molten Man was born. But of course, by the end of the issue, Spider-Man ties him up and leaves him for the police. Now I'm sure both characters will be modified and changed a bit for the MCU, but they usually do a great job adapting their characters from the comics, so I'm super excited to see where they go with them. As for the powers and abilities, Molten Man can lift up to 40 tons and withstand temperatures of 500 degrees Fahrenheit for an extremely long duration. He's also intelligent being a scientist with a bachelor's degree of science and chemical engineering. And obviously Molten Man has the ability to emit dangerous and even deadly levels of radiation as well as being able to give off heat at levels of 300 degrees Fahrenheit. As for Hydro Man, he can turn his entire body into liquid and can even make shapes or constructs out of water. Because he's pure liquid, he can also go into small openings with ease. Ah, uh, thank you. Also, he can merge and manipulate huge bodies of water in his water form, increasing his mass and giving him the ability to cause tidal waves. Because he's made out of water, he's also impervious to bullets or any sort of projectile, and he has the ability to turn into ice or steam. Basically, he's a shapeshifter made out of water and can manipulate and do anything water can do. But there you have it, friends, a summary of both Hydro Man and Molten Man's comic book origin. For reading recommendations, check out The Amazing Spider-Man 212, 217, 315, 133, and 440. That'll give you a great start in checking the characters out for yourself. But other than that, my comic conrads, be sure to check out our Facebook, our Instagram, and our Twitter. Links for those are always in the description. And if you like the videos we're putting out each and every week, be sure to subscribe. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.